Hi, hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, I wanted today actually to talk a little bit about race bias in psychology and therapy and share a few insights I've had because like a lot of people that work in therapy or that have been in a lot of groups, you know, something you kind of notice, particularly when you live in a particularly multiracial community and the UK certainly in an urban environment is pretty, is very multiracial, you know, is that there's only kind of one demographic often showing up for workshops. You know, that uh, it's a lot of white, middle class, middle aged people, basically. And uh, what I noticed personally, I started a YouTube channel about four years ago. I'm, I'm also mixed race, half Iranian, uh, Anglo Iranian. And I noticed uh, after a while that I was getting a lot more people from different race backgrounds coming to workshops. And I, so I started to get interested in race. And I know it's a hot potato, potato political subject and stuff, but I just wanted to put a little bit some of my insights out. Because I think without anyone, you know, deliberately doing anything wrong in any way, there is quite a race bias in psychology and therapy in general. And, you know, to qualify that statement, this is not directed at psychologists or therapists, you know, who generally, in my, in my experience, you know, go out of their way not to be racist in any way. You know, they're very, very concerned that they're consciously being as aware as possible. But rather it is, but in the history of therapy and psychology, there has, you know, existed a considerable race bias. And if we look back at the history of psychology, then you're going to look back to about the 1890s and, you know, the emergence of Sigmund Freud uh, in Vienna, you know, started to write books which really took, took the public imagination, you know, a lot of the roots of modern psychology were, can, you can stretch back quite a bit further, but it really came out into the kind of mainstream, so to speak, as much as there was a mainstream in 1890s Europe, uh, with the work of Sigmund Freud. And a lot of people from the kind of intelligentsia of rich people, all of whom, of course, in that era were white, or certainly the overwhelming majority of them, started to become interested in psychology, become interested in how much the events of their childhood and the attitudes and behaviour of their parents had affected their own lives and their own attitudes and their own thinking behaviours. And so, you know, you have this vision of the kind of the typical kind of a person going to therapy, you know, going along to see Freud or one of his contemporaries and lying down on the couch and talking about your mum and your dad and this kind of thing. And really from there, it just proceeded along. It just proceeded along and really you know, you, you can go through the decades, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and, and it's still the same demographic showing up for therapy, still the same demographic getting involved in psychology. And right through the 90s and the, uh, and the 2000s and, and straight on, it, it is very much the case that psychology itself developed in a market environment that was strongly orientated towards relatively affluent middle class white people. And you know, it, that there's nothing wrong with that and no one is doing anything racist. But to me, that is, that, that is clearly a fact or certainly, you know, it, it, there's a lot of clear, there's a lot of uh, evidence to point in that direction, you know. And so one has to ask the question. The question I ask is, you know, is, is it valid for, for, for therapy to be so kind of directed by the needs and desires and preoccupations of one demographic group and do other demographic groups have different have different needs and perceptions and it's not just about race it's also about age you know uh, and like I say something I noticed with my own work uh, in with with bioenergetics in particular is that I get a lot of people from different race groups and different age groups showing up guys in their late teens and 20s and 30s and by guys I mean men and women as well uh, who are interested to work on themselves in this way. They want to look forwards into how they can develop rather than introspect a lot on their childhood and what went wrong with mum and dad because, you know, they're only in their 20s. They're only in their 20s. And I think this needs to be recognised quite a lot more in mainstream therapy and mainstream psychology that what's happened is that there's been a lot of unconscious bias, you know, that's just crept in towards certain demographic groups and the reality is, of course, that white middle aged people only represent well under one percent of the world's population. And I think there's room for a lot more expansion in psychology and a lot more expansion in therapy generally. You know, in the, like I say, there's the, there's the age thing and there's also, 
you know, something I notice is that most white middle class people and, and of course most 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 white middle aged people, I meant to say, are relatively, uh, you know, they don't move a lot. They don't move a lot generally, you know, their bodies, they're quite sedentary by nature. And that's not to say that everyone from that demographic is like that, but they are quite sedentary. And with other races and other age groups, you'll see a lot more body movement. And as you know, certain areas of psychology are discovering and uh, finding out through scientific research, the body may well be meant to move quite a lot more than the average kind of 50 or 60 year old is moving their body is moving their body, that there may be elements of psychological health which are intrinsically linked to body movement. And so it's good to look. It's good to look how much has bias crept in, how much has bias crept in, how much has the history of psychology and the people who are, you know, the only people really available to get interested in it and have the money to do it in the old days, how much is that still running the show? How much is it still running the show? Because what I would like to see is, you know, far greater access uh, to people from different race backgrounds and people from different age backgrounds who, you know, they may not want, like I say, to introspect heavily on childhood, but they may still want to clear up a lot of what is stopping them from moving forwards and having a good life. And so I think it's important as we move forward, you know, from 2020 onwards, that that psychotherapy in general and psychotherapists and therapists are aware that, you know, that endless introspection is not necessarily the only way forwards and that the body is very, very important as well. You know, how we move our body, where stuff is held in the body is very, very important. And that these areas of psychology are also often attractive to younger people and to people from different race backgrounds race backgrounds okay that's about all I really wanted to say about it you know because I'm, I, I skirt a little bit around I don't want to I don't want to um you know create some big political drama or something like that for me it's really not about that but I do want to 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 express the my, my opinions you know and my insights that there has been for no you know no malign reason quite a strong race and age bias going on in therapy and psychology and it would be great to address and move beyond that okay guys i hope you've enjoyed this little chat and i will speak to you later